Welcome back to Your Health Television Program. I'm Dr. David Morwood. I am a board-certified plastic surgeon, and I'm very pleased you could join us for our next segment. You've heard me speak about breast augmentation prior to this. And in summary, breast augmentation is a process where a woman can become bigger, fuller, rounder, and a little bit higher in one day. Uh, her breasts can be enlarged, almost unlimited sizes. There certainly are safe zones. She has lots of choices about saline, uh, silicone, different incisions uh, to put the implant above or below the muscle, etc. And I can help a woman make most of those choices. Again, a woman's uh, two personal choices in my mind are what size she wants to be, keeping in mind that we can't predict cup size, and will she have saline or silicone breast implants. There's another important issue that we can discuss regarding breast enhancement. You may recall that I said breast augmentation results in a woman's breast being bigger, fuller, rounder, and a little bit higher. For the woman who wants to be significantly higher, or in other words, she needs her nipple areola complex and perhaps the breast mound itself to be ele elevated significantly, that introduces us to the topic or the phrase of mastopexy or breast lift. Now, what is a mastopexy or breast lift? Essentially, we uh, rearrange the skin, the nipple areola complex, and sometimes the breast tissue itself to be in a higher position, closer to the, to the clavicles, closer uh, to the neck. There's a term called breast ptosis, which is a medical surgical plastic surgery term essentially for loose breasts or droopy breasts. That's very commonly seen with weight loss. Some women just in their families, they have some loose tissue and so their breasts are kind of droopy or what we call totic. It can happen after breastfeeding where a woman gets engorged, the tissues get stretched out and then following pregnancy and breastfeeding, she's left with kind of a deflated uh, lower positioned breast. Those are all examples of droopy breast or breast ptosis. So for a woman who wants to be a little bit higher, oftentimes, as I said, a breast implant or breast augmentation can result in a woman's breast being bigger, fuller, rounder, and a little bit higher. Again, if she needs a significant elevation in the breast or the position of the nipple areola complex, that's when we can consider a mastopexy or breast lift. There's a few terms that we need to review. I think everyone knows what the nipple is. Uh, that's the projecting part in the cent center, typically a center of the breast. The areola or areola is the tan part. It's like the saucer around the nipple. And the areolar uh, junction or the areolar junction, infra areolar junction is where the areola or the, the tan part just turns into the paler skin. In a woman of almost any race or color, there's a, a border between the paler skin and the dark skin of the areola. And of course, as I said, the nipple is that projecting part right in the center. The inframammary fold or inframammary crease is that area on the lower aspect of the breast mound where the breast meets the chest wall, meets the rib cage. And of course, that's a real structure. That's a shelf. If we look at that shelf under the microscope, if we look at that tissues, there's, there are fibrous attachments. And that inframammary fold or inframammary crease can be a thicker, thicker tissue with fibrous attachments. And it's, it's an actual shelf whereby the breast can rest on that or sometimes descend below that. So how do we grade ptosis or the, lo the loose breast or droopy breast? First of all, a grade one ptosis is where the nipple is positioned just, at, uh, just about within one centimeter of that inframammary fold. Uh, that's very typical that we can see with weight loss and after some women breastfeeding. And as I said, in some families, we just women just seem to have fewer supporting ligaments and the breast tends to ride down. That grade one ptosis is very common. Grade two ptosis is where the nipple areola complex or the nipple or in the side view rides two centimeters or lower than the inframammary fold. And grade three ptosis is when it tends to be at the bottom of the mound pointing downward below the inframammary fold, uh, usually more than 
two to four centimeters, four centimeters or greater. That's grade three ptosis. There's another type of ptosis that we call pseudotosis or false ptosis, also called glandular ptosis. That's where the nipple areola complex stays at or above even, or within one centimeter of the inframammary fold, but the breast gland descends below that. So you could picture in the side view at the inframammary fold, the nipple areola complex is at the, is there present within one centimeter of the inframammary fold, but the gland of the breast falls underneath. That's called glandular or pseudo breastosis. Uh, pseudo is false, false breastosis, but it certainly is a type of droopy breast or false, uh, false, falsely totic breast that women are concerned with. So how do we address this? First of all, grade one ptosis, where the nipple is within one centimeter of the inframammary fold, typically that will respond to the placement of an implant. An implant in and of itself will tend to elevate the nipple areola complex uh, one grade or one or two centimeters. It's a type of auto-rotation phenomena. If you could conceive of uh, a, uh, a child on a swing, as the swing moves forward, then it becomes higher. In other words, it's not just a straight horizontal path of the swing. As the, as the nipple real complex, as a swing moves forward, it also becomes higher. So that's how a breast implant can reduce a grade one ptosis or minimize a, a, a level of ptosis or a grade of ptosis about one degree. So again, for grade one ptosis, a breast implant can be effective to lift the nipple areola complex. If it's more than that, that's, uh, that's a situation where we can consider a separate mastopexy. And a mastopexy can be done at the same time as a breast augmentation or it can be done at a separate operation, following or even before. Now some women come into my office and they like their size, and when they're in a bra, they like their size and they like the position. So for in general, for that woman, I could consider a mastopexy alone. In other words, just a breast lift. For a woman who does not need to be a lot higher, but she wants to be bigger, fuller, rounder, that's a breast augmentation. Whether it's done with her own fat or whether, we're, whether we or not we use an implant, an augmentation can be done alone. A mastopexy or breast lift can be done alone. Then there's the case where we do a combination approach called a mastopexy augmentation where we're putting in a breast implant or using a woman's own fat and doing a lift at the same time. There are a lot of ways to do that. Now you've heard me say that there are pros and cons to every decision that we make in plastic surgery as in life. There are pros and cons to breast augmentation. There are also pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages to breast lifting or mastopexy. The advantage, of course, is that a woman gets to be higher. She gets to have more upper pole fullness. She gets to be elevated and higher. In general, a more youthful appearing and fulling breast. However, the downside is that we need to make incisions on the outside of the breast, on the skin, therefore it leaves scars. Anytime a plastic surgeon makes an incision, even a plastic surgeon, that results in a permanent visible scar. But please be aware that there are many different patterns, many different incisions that we can make to do a breast lift or breast, uh, to, to do a breast lift or mastopexy. In general, it depends upon a woman's size, her pre-existing position of the nipple areola complex. As I said, there's different grades, grade one, grade two, and grade three, and of course, glandular or pseudotosis. Depending upon the grade of her ptosis will, will influence the type of incision that we make. And there are different patterns. There's a, um, for example, the periareolar approach is when we make a concentric oval-shaped incision, like a, not exactly a circle, but an oval-shaped incision around uh, an areola, and we make a smaller circular incision in the, uh, in the areola itself. We remove the interposed skin, we rearrange some tissue and do some undermining, etc., thereby reducing the skin bra, resulting in an elevated nipple areola complex. That's a periareolar approach. And the scar, in general, 
although scars are unpredictable, even breast scars are unpredictable, even when, made by a, when, when the incision is made by a plastic surgeon, breast scars are unpredictable. But w if we can place that incision and the resulting scar where the areola or where the tan part changes to the paler skin, it tends to be less conspicuous because it lays right in that border of the different colors and so it tends to be less conspicuous than if an incision was made just across the areola, for example, or right on the breast uh, skin. Those incisions are, tend to be difficult to hide. So a, in a periarealar mastopexy or approach, the scar and the incision ends up right where the tan part changes to the paler skin or the white skin or, or darker skin. Now, a circumvertical approach results in something called a lollipop scar, the lollipop incision, or tennis racket uh, scar. That's when a woman has that circular scar around the areola, and there's one up and down, circumvertical. So that way, we can take more skin out of the inferior pole or the lower pole, uh, resulting in oftentimes a more projecting, higher, fuller, uh, appearing and feeling breast. That's the circumvertical approach. Um, a slight modification of that, uh, that approach is kind of a J incision where they, we have the circular incision around the areola and instead of having just simply a straight up and down incision for the vertical, it tends to curl off almost like a J. It tends to taper off or feather off or curl off toward the, the lateral part of the breast or outside towards the armpit or the side of the chest and that's a modification of the circumvertical approach. That can be also very effective in minimizing scarring and taking up extra skin and removing extra skin. And through, through any of those incisions, we can modify the breast parenchyma, breast mound itself, put an implant in, et cetera, if we need to. The other type of incision to talk about is typically known as the Weiss pattern, uh, resulting in an anchor-shaped type of scar. Again, the scar is around the areola where the tan changes to the paler skin, a vertical incision up and down, and then an, an incision and scar of varying degrees right in the inframammary fold, in the, in, in the inframammary crease. So if you could picture an anchor, like a, from the sea, from a ship, there's a shape, a, a circle around the areola, up and down, and then one in the inframammary fold, inframammary crease. That's called a Weiss pattern or uh, full mastopexy approach. That's also similarly to the way we can do a breast reduction. When we do a reduction, we certainly remove skin using those patterns, uh, and we can also re go inside and remove part of the breast mound itself, the breast tissue itself, the breast, what we call the parenchyma, remove part of the organ in a breast reduction, as opposed to just doing a breast lift. Oftentimes, when we do a breast lift, we will do a breast augmentation as well. So again, breast augmentation mastopexy is becoming a more and more common operation for breast rejuvenation, breast enhancement. Part of breast rejuvenation after breastfeeding, after giving childbirth, etc., or after weight loss, is that we can lift the breasts significantly and we can also make them bigger, fuller, and rounder that tends to be a much more youthful look and feel when we do an augmentation mastopexy. There's a lot of, a lot of issues to discuss when a woman is choosing between having a mastopexy alone, having an augmentation alone, or having a simultaneous approach, which is called an augmentation mastopexy. There are issues we can discuss uh, in the office about the use of an implant. Should we do the mastopexy first? Should we do the breast augmentation first, et cetera? But to suffice it to say that there are many options, choices, and alternatives, um, whenever possible, we try to get as much work done as, as we can in one operation and try to bring a woman closer to her goals, as, as close as possible to her goals in one operation, whenever possible. Touch-ups and revisions are very common with mastopexy, and they're also common with augmentation mastopexy. And these are things we can talk about in the office. Again, I'm Dr. David Morwood. I'm here in Monterey, California. My phone number is 831-646-8661, or go to my website, drmorwood.com. That's D-R-M-O-R-W-O-O-D, drmorwood.com on the World Wide Web. Once again, thank you so very much for joining us for this segment. This is Your Health, 
television program. I'm Dr. David Morwood. I am a board certified plastic surgeon and I hope you tune in again very soon. Thanks for being here.